to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your Peptide Buddy. Hey everyone, so a few days ago we did a comprehensive review on Melanotan 2 that'll be linked in the description below, and multiple subscribers suggested we cover its analog molecule, Melanotan 1, also known as afamelanotide, which I find, I think, a bit more interesting. This way we can dissect the differences and hopefully enhance our understanding of both of these peptides in the process. As we concluded our previous discussion on MT2 with some history, MT1 took a similar path with a good amount of its data stemming from the same team at the University of Arizona, however it didn't always stay that way. MT1 is a potent compound with a half-life of about 30 minutes that has greatest proclivity for the melanocortin-1 receptor, which is expressed in skin, immune cells, the brain, placenta, testes, adipocytes, amongst others, and its main functions revolve around pigmentation and anti-inflammatory effects. Now, structurally speaking, melanotan-1 is very similar to alpha-melanocyte-stimulating hormone, or alpha-MSH, with an amino acid difference as a methionine was replaced by a norleucine and a phenylalanine molecule was made into its stereoisomer, D-phenylalanine. Minimal changes here. Now, melanotan-2 is, in simple terms, a shortened version of melanotan-1. Another difference between MT1 and MT2 is that while melanotan-1 is a linear peptide, MT2 is cyclic. And of note, MT1 is also known as afamelanotide, and as we said, binds predominantly to this melanocortin-1 receptor. So let's go through some history, but before we do, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you like this evidence-based peptide content. It's the best way to help a teeny tiny peptide YouTuber. If you hated it, give us a thumbs down. I know it's tempting sometimes, but let's get back to the story. So MT1 was actually investigated in the context of skin tanning and has grown to have a reputation as a quote-unquote sunless tan. And as you can predict, given its similarity to MT2, MT1 did show an ability to darken the skin, and interestingly, it reportedly did so predominantly via enhanced expression of eumelanin, which is UV absorbent, and it didn't seem to increase expression of pheomelanin, a photo-unstable product that may be a carcinogen, and it showed to increase the ratio of eumelanin to pheomelanin, which indicates primary increases of eumelanin in these subjects with darker skin in the absence of sunlight exposure. Moreover, it was determined that MT1 exhibited synergy when combined with low amounts of sunlight, in that melanotan-1 plus the sun equals a darker person than with either alone. And by 11 weeks after administration, the reflectance values, which were used to measure skin chromaticity, didn't yet return to baseline. And the time it took to achieve a tan with addition of MT1 was approximately one half of that of solar exposure alone. And so researchers who were quite bullish on these findings felt that MT1 plus a little sun would equate to a long-lasting tan that necessitates less solar exposure, i.e. perhaps this would mean less damage to the skin given the same results aesthetically would be achieved with less sunlight which is an interesting point. And although some of the topically administered rodent data showed that MT2 could possibly be considered a solution to be placed onto the skin itself, researchers deemed MT1 pretty non-bioavailable via that route after these attempted transdermal research on rodents, making subcutaneous injection understandably a more effective source. And in preclinical rodent models, the compound appeared to be generally safe, and a teratogenesis study was conducted to evaluate fetal development, which we don't really get to see often with the peptides we discuss here, and it didn't show any malformations or changes in parturition timing or when you'd expect the rodent to give birth. And when it was tested in pigs for 30 days to assess safety, researchers found that after sacrifice of these pigs and their analysis, there didn't appear to be any toxicological or substance-induced negative post-mortem changes. The first of the human studies was published in 1991, and MT1 was found to darken skin pigmentation, especially in the areas with higher presence of melanocytes. And the most prominent side effects were flushing, followed by nausea in about 10%, which appears to be expected given our deep dive on MT2 earlier this week. 
and study participants were given sunscreen and advised not to maintain direct or prolonged sun exposure, ideally to test for use of MT1 while controlling for sunlight itself, so predominantly evaluated in its absence, which of course is tough to do, but their conclusion was that in the absence of sun, it can darken the skin. Given these results, a dose escalation trial was initiated in people with similar skin types according to the Fitzpatrick scale, predominantly type 3 and type 4, so darker skinned people, and gastrointestinal upset became a much more prominent side effect, as did lethargy. Further research attempted to analyze risk via in vitro studies, which looked at Anchorage-independent clonogenic cell growth, a characteristic that pretty much describes cancer's ability to thrive in abnormal environmental situations, which didn't seem to be enhanced by MT1. It also was observed to inhibit melanoma cell proliferation in vitro. Further research in immunocompromised mice didn't show any cancerous transformation after normal human melanocytes were exposed to large doses of MT1 and then transplanted into the rodents. So while the U.S. research was pretty much conducted on those with darker skin tones, Australia was like, let's try this on paler folks too. And their findings were that melanin density in both groups were increased, and also that UV-induced sunburn cells were reduced in patients with a low MED baseline, which pretty much means that it appeared to be protective against those most susceptible to being sunburned. Which is interesting, because typically melanin shares an inverse relationship with cancer risk, as in the lower the melanin, the higher the risk of skin cancers, which was also found to be consistent with measurements of melanin density itself, particularly in men. And although generally tolerated, Australian researchers found the same side effects as their American counterparts to be most prominent. Flushing and nausea were at the top of the list, as expected. And the Australian company that propelled the research since the early 2000s was called Epitan, which was later rebranded to the Clinavel Group, which is what they exist as today. And a lot of their research does lie in melanocortin agonism and their product, Sines, is FDA approved to help individuals with EPP, also known as erythropoietic protoporphyria, in which these individuals are painfully susceptible to sunlight. And interestingly, the key ingredient in Sines is dum 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 afamelanotide, aka melanotan 1. And it's not Clinovel's only melanotan 1 based product. They have another called Prenumbra that is making its way through research for hopefully reducing the impact of ischemic stroke. So we'll see how that turns out, but at this point, it appears to be well tolerated. And amazingly, Sines, the company's product, the only that has gained melanotan 1 FDA approval, is available as a subcutaneous implant to be replaced every two months, which is pretty darn cool and hopefully very helpful to these patients who really can't spend any time in the sunlight. Now let's see if there are any other topics of investigation, either in the past or in the pipeline. So since flushing is a common side effect of the compound, it's proposed that there are vasodilatory effects which could hold clinical applications. Remember how we just discussed the possible role in stroke management? This stems from a similar idea. So some researchers may hold there's a possible benefit in blood pressure management, for instance. However, science hasn't really touched this topic yet. And as we touched on with melanotan 2, there certainly exists a relationship between the melanocortin system and body fat. But since afamelanotide is more targeted towards the MC1 receptor rather than the MC4, which seems to be predominantly implicated in obesity, it hasn't really gained much of an interest in this context. So with regards to a pipeline for future research, my guess is that the most predominant feature investigated will be with regards to vascular health, right? They're already looking into ischemic stroke, but possibly other cardiovascular metrics will be on the horizon given the research into alpha MSH that exhibits an ability to regulate vascular tone. So, final thoughts. In general, although flushing and nausea are, at this point, unsurprising if they come about, this appears to be more of a trustworthy product than MT2 in the primary context of skin tanning. And unlike MT2 in a clinical setting, it's actually helping people and is FDA approved for such, which is great to see. I think the concerns we discussed with melanotan 2 and those terrible case reports we talked about aren't only due to its greater affinity for different melanocortin receptors, but also given its popularity and experimental nature, people turn to these underground sources, which oftentimes doesn't go well. This peptide, MT1, is more targeted towards skin health and increasing melanin density, which it's shown to do and has been generally well tolerated in a clinical population, and to my knowledge, there isn't any evidence at this point that after 
alpha-melanotide increases risk of melanoma. So I hope this video provided you with a cut to the chase, an evidence-based overview on the topic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All relevant resources will be linked in the description too. And on top of that, if you're looking for a way to further support the channel, you'll find the link to the Patreon below as well. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate the time and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy. He's your peptide buddy.